Hi, I am going to teach you how to love physics, and that happens when you learn how to understand physics. Today we will continue to look at kinematics, and specifically at a very common situation that happens to be governed by kinematics. This is projectile motion, the motion of objects under the acceleration of Earth's gravity. All objects near the surface of the Earth experience an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared towards the Earth regardless of height. This is assuming that all the heights we are discussing are very near the surface. The following problem also involves kinematics, but unlike the last problem, the complexity of this problem requires very careful use of sign convention for the vector quantities. A boy throws a ball up at a velocity of 5 meters per second. The boy releases the ball from a height of 1 meter above the ground. Determine the highest point the ball will travel. Once again, do not panic. All we need to do is look for equations that apply to the situation. It is assumed by the problem statement that all of this is happening on the Earth near the surface, and we know that any object near the surface of the Earth experiences an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared towards the surface of the Earth. Since the acceleration is constant in this situation, those four wonderful kinematic e equations are valid here. So we have now accomplished the first step and found some equations that apply to our problem. Let's now move to the second step and interpret the word problem into mathematical quantities to see what we are given by the problem statement. By virtue of the action occurring near the surface of the Earth, the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared down. We are told that the initial velocity is 5 meters per second up and the initial height is one meter above the surface. The fact that the acceleration is down while the initial velocity is up makes the directionality of these vectors very important. So we will use sign convention to distinguish between up and down. Any vector that is pointing up will receive a positive sign and any vector that is pointing down will receive a negative sign. It is a good thing to put in your memory that different signs on vectors will always represent the different direction of the vectors according to the sign convention used. Before we advance on the problem, I'd like to make, take a moment and explore what happens in general when the acceleration is in the opposite direction of the initial velocity. I'll try to do this with graphs of both velocity and acceleration as functions of time. The graph of acceleration as a function of time is a level line because in our case, Acceleration is constant, but does that line lie above or below the t-axis? Well, we decided that vectors pointing up receive a, a positive sign, and vectors pointing down receive a negative sign. So the graph of acceleration of gravity as a function of time is a level line somewhere below the t-axis. The acceleration at any time t is the slope of the velocity curve of at that time t. Since the acceleration is constant and negative, the velocity curve must be linear with negative slope equal to the acceleration. We have the slope of the velocity, so now we just need some known point on the velocity curve. We are given initial velocity, or velocity evaluated at t equals zero to be five meters per second, so we, now, we have forward velocity as a function of time to be a line with slope equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared, starting at 5 meters per second. The, this graph is vector valued, meaning a specific vector is defined at, at each value of t. Notice what happens. The velocity starts out positive, decreases in magnitude until it reaches zero, and then it starts to increase in magnitude once more, but the direction is now down. So the velocity is originally up because the boy throws the ball up, but the downward acceleration decreases the upward velocity until it reaches zero, then it begins to increase the velocity, but only in the downward direction. Returning to the problem, the desired quantity is maximum height. Height is a position at some time t, so we need to look for equa an equation with position at time t. Equations 2, 3, and 4 all have this parameter in them. Equation 4 requires two other quantities, final velocity and time elapsed. Equation 2 requires time elapsed, but since we don't know that time, this equation will be needlessly complicated. 
The simplest to use is equation 3 since it only requires knowledge of the final velocity to solve for final height. Now, what is the velocity at the time desired? The position desired is at the peak, but is there anything about the peak location that can indicate some value of the velocity? Well, the velocity at the peak is zero. I know this because it cannot be at the highest point at any time it has a positive velocity, since that would mean the ball at that position would be moving up to an even higher position. The highest point is the moment just before it starts to go down. And at that moment, the ball has a velocity of zero meters per second. So the velocity at the time we desire is zero meters per second. Here's an alternative explanation using calculus. Critical points only occur if the first derivative is zero. The peak height is a critical point, so it must occur when the velocity is zero. Now substitute in the values for and solve for position at time t. Remember that acceleration has a negative value. The solution is a height of 2.3 meters above the ground. Notice what happens if you got, forgot to put the negative sign for the acceleration. You end up with an incorrect answer of negative 0.27 meters. And that makes no sense. How could the highest position of the ball be negative 0.27 meters below the ground? Obviously, this is an incorrect answer. And that demonstrates the importance of the careful use of sign convention. How long has the ball been in the air when the ball is falling at half the initial speed? And at what height is it? The question asks for the value of the parameters of time and height corresponding to some velocity. Once again, we need to look for equations that are applicable to the problem. As mentioned earlier, this problem involves constant acceleration for the entirety of the problem, so those four wonderful kinematic equations are available for our use. Within the equations, we are looking specifically for the values of time and height at time t. Equations 2 and three, 4 both include time and height at time t, while equations 1 and 3 involve only time or height respectively. We can use either, either equation 1 or 3 to solve for one of the variables and then substitute that value into the other, either equations 2 or 4 to solve for the other value. I choose to solve for height first from equation 3 and then substitute that value into equation 2 to solve for time. Now for the known values. The final velocity is given implicitly by the problem statement. We are told that it is half the initial, that is 2.5 meters per second, and falling. Falling means that it's going down. Observing the sign convention of vectors being up as positive and vectors being down as, down as negative and substituting for the values of initial velocity and velocity at the time we are interested in and the acceleration, we get a value of 1.95 meters as the height. Substitution of the height into equation 2 produces a quadratic function of time. This may seem to be a concern because quadratics with real solutions often have two solutions. Sure enough, at a height of 1.95 meters, I get a time of 0.25 seconds and 0.75 seconds. Since the equation gives the position of the particle as a function of time, this means that the particle passes the height of 1.95 meters twice at both 0.25 seconds and 0.75 seconds. This is expected from the preceding intuitive de discussion of, of the problem. The ball goes up and then down, so every position it passes on the way up, it will also pass on the way down. So we need to somehow select which time we want from what is given about the problem. We know that the given velocity is down, so which time will have a downward velocity? Is it 0.25 seconds or 0.75 seconds? Well, the ball is initially traveling up. So the earlier time will correspond to an upward velocity when the ball is traveling up. The latter time is when the ball is traveling down. So the time we want is 0.75 seconds. This problem demonstrated the importance of the careful use of sign convention and the use of physical intuition to add understanding to the numerical solutions of the equations you choose. In addition to understanding how to select applicable equations and correctly substituting physical data into those equations, you need to develop your ability to handle the two new skills demonstrated here, sign convention and physical interpretation of your numerical results. 
Well, if you have any questions, just leave them down below.